My name is Eileen Hassey. I'm the founder and owner of Ritual Coffee Roasters. Ah. That sounds nice. Um, for those of you not knowing why the clapping is happening, um, we're a San Francisco-based coffee company. I have three coffee bars and a wholesale roasting operation. And uh, as Ed mentioned, you already drank my coffee. Um, what I'd like to speak to you today about is creating a culture. Um, oh, that's my chef. Um, we just celebrated Ritual's four-year anniversary, and what I have found to be the most inspiring and surprising thing since opening our doors is that incredible opportunities and exciting projects come to you when you create something, like speaking here today. Uh, the second is that it was surprisingly easy to create a culture. Uh, I need to insert a disclaimer here. Many of you are familiar with the culture of Ritual on the customer side of the counter or of the brand. Uh, what I'm going to focus on is the culture on the barista side. If you create something, if you are committed to an ideal, you will attract people who will carry your ideas further than you ever expected them to go. Thanks to the original mission of Ritual and a few key decisions I made at the beginning, Ritual was known almost immediately in the coffee world. My biggest fear before opening our doors was that I wouldn't be able to find great employees. Creating a culture solved that. So this is the how-to guide of creating a culture. Step one, determine a simple mission and maybe a characteristic. For us, it was making great coffee for the people of San Francisco and being nice. Uh, the first barista I hired heard through the grapevine what we were doing. He wrote me this email that was extremely passionate and a little bit creepy. He said, I've heard what you're doing and I want to be a part of it. And I said, well, come down. You know, we're not finished building. You know, I knew that I would either think he was great and offer him a job on the spot or, um, you know, be scared. Uh, uh, and he ended up being our first roaster, so he's stuck with us for a long time. Um, for us, the mission immediately attracted the right employees, people who were there for the product, for the opportunity to educate customers, uh, and to learn more about coffee themselves. So this leads us to step two, finding the people who will live your mission. Be vigilant in hiring. Uh, there was an article recently in Fast Company that many of you probably read about how interviewing gives you no indication of somebody's future job performance. It does give you a pretty good indication of whether somebody will fit into your culture. So hiring a team that's dedicated to the mission means the culture will evolve. A community will develop uh, collective values, and those values will reinforce the mission. Uh, a common question I'm asked is how I hire. To get an interview, you have to answer one question correctly. Do you like coffee? Some of the answers I get are, yeah, I've worked in coffee shops for 10 years. Okay. Sometimes I hear, caffeine's my favorite drug. And once I heard, I live around the corner. <laughs> The people that I hire are the ones that look at me and look a little bit crazy for a second and go, I love coffee. Those are the people that I hire. Uh, the, okay, so step three. You have to um, support the greater community and anything that reinforces the culture in spite of apparent financial irresponsibility. So for us, that means supporting uh, barista competitions. Um, that's a whole other conversation um, as to what those are, but basically it's, it's a way of being out in the greater coffee community. Um, so it's something uh, that every year, any barista that says that they want to get involved in it, I give them all of the support that they need, uh, and that includes closing the store so that the rest of the company can go cheer them on. We close two days a year. It's Christmas and the finals of the Western Regional Barista Competition. Uh, hopefully being here is something like that for some of you. Um, it, it's a way of reinforcing the culture from the outside. So step four, 
Give those great people who are enforcing your culture and helping it evolve a reason to stick around. Uh, that could be education, new opportunities, innovation within the company, or seeing the bigger picture. That was something that Chris Riley mentioned uh, about Mac, and that's something that's a big part of Virtual, is always kind of, you know, knowing that we've, we don't have it figured out and, uh, and that there, there's always ways of, of improving. Um, the other big one for us is the, is the big picture. Coffee is the number two traded commodity in the world. This means that the way that we buy coffee has a huge impact on communities all over the world. Uh, it was interesting you know, hearing people talking about Guatemala and Rwanda, and these are places where I know that I've already you know, been able to positively impact communities uh, because of coffee. And connecting my employees to this ideal and to bringing, whether you know, that's by bringing coffee producers to San Francisco to see what we're doing, or sending my staff to Origin to see what, what it really means to pick coffee, uh, or you know, buying school supplies for my producer's kids in Honduras, or sponsoring uh, music programs in schools in Brazil. These are all ways of bringing home the point for my staff that what they're doing is connected to something bigger and that they're the, the last step in a long chain of people who have worked very hard. Um, so I'd like to finish by sharing with you our current mission statement, which has, has evolved over the years, and it's helped reinforce the culture, since originally it was just make great coffee. Uh, the mission of Ritual Coffee Roasters is to be a playground for people who love coffee while building a sustainable business model and investing in the communities that support us, both locally and globally. Thank you.